So one of the most important skills that you need as a product manager is empathy, right? I think that's the that's the basic of all. If you don't if you don't try to build on it, if you don't have it, it's going to be very difficult for you to become a product manager because you need empathy to talk to your users. You need to understand what is their problem, and not only users. You need to also understand your stakeholders, the people that you are working with. Right? I think this is important across all boards, across all jobs. So this is something definitely you need to understand. If I were to kind of define it more sharply, I would say it's user understanding, right? To understand what your user wants, what they don't want, what is the actual problem. Um, and, and that is not something you can just, you know, read a book about empathy and you have empathy, right? It, it, it gets built over time. You just talk to users, you feel their pain, right? Um, it, it gets built over time. But this is, this is the crucial thing that you need to have uh, for sure. The other thing is people skill. And I think this is the most, like, apart from empathy, this is the most important skill to be has as a product manager, right? <coughs> and you get further divided to say it's persuasion. Right? As I said, you know, uh, you have no authority. You need to convince people. It's negotiation, right? Again, you need collaboration because you want to work with other people. And one of the best, like one of the uh, examples that I give at this point is uh, like this image kind of defines product management very well. I think it's one of the best images that I've seen till now defining product management, right? <laughs> Which is um, every team, <clears throat> finance team, business team, customer support team, marketing team, every team will come to you, uh, come to the product and say, you know what, Gaurav, uh, we are facing this problem. We want you to automate it because every team wants the tech resource to reduce the burden of their work, right? <laughs> and that's natural. Every team wants that, right? Every team wants to be more efficient, um, more automation, more technology to make their life easier. Every team wants that, right? And they're going to come to you and ask for it, right? Now the engineering resource or tech resource is the most, most important resource in the company. You can't just say, okay, you know, I'll build for everyone. You can't do that, right? That's not possible, right? Because you have 10 engineers, they can only work on one task, right? So you cannot pick off 10 tasks. So what happens is uh, from the 10 people who would come to you with a request or something to be built, you have to say yes to one and no to all nine. So you're just saying yes to one that, hey, I'll build for you. And for the rest nine, you're saying, so sorry, can't prioritize, I, I can't build for you. And that is something you need to do on a daily basis. You need to say no a lot on a daily basis. And now where it gets tricky is, let's say this month, 10 people came to you, you said yes to one, no to nine. Next month, you're actually going to go to those nine people because you need their help. Because you want business team, to, uh, to deploy the product because product adoption is not going up. That's your KPI. I need to go and ask for their help. And you need to kind of convince them that, hey, I said no to you. I rejected you, but I need your help and you need to help me. And you need to do that day in, day out. Right? So you're going to go to the same people who you rejected in, in a sense or you said no to right? and convince them to help you. <clears throat> and if you're not good at maintaining these relationships, if you're not good at people, this is going to hurt you a lot because <clears throat> for them, app adoption is not a KPI. They don't care, right? So <clears throat> they have to genuinely feel that they want to help you. So if you don't manage that relationship, if you are very rude to them, right? Why would, why in the world they would help you and your KPI will get hurt, right? So it's, it's always a balance that you need to do with <clears throat> people in terms of managing and collaborating, right? So if you're someone who loves to be an individual contributor, you don't want to <clears throat> interact with a lot of stakeholders. You want to be like, you know, I want to just individually contribute to my role. Product management is not the right career. Right? <clears throat> because you need to be around people 24-7, 365. Work with them, collaborate with them, fight with them, for sure. So <clears throat> you need to be great at people. If that's something that you don't want in your career, you need to also think if that's like product management is the right career for you. Now. The other thing is problem solving. I think uh, this is the crux of the job which is <clears throat> you need to solve problems, right? And problems could be as varied as possible. Right? User has a problem, they need to build it. Suddenly there is a bug in the app, payments are crashing, orders are going down because payments are not working. How do you go and solve that? Right? <coughs> uh, customer team tickets are rising. Why the ticket is rising? Because a new feature was launched and you didn't think through of what the impact it would be on a customer support, right? How do you go about solving that problem? So problem solving is like something that you would day, do day in, day out. <coughs> from smaller to bigger problems, you would solve one and there will be 10 more problems to be solved. So it's a journey of solving problems across your entire career as being a product manager. Right? So you should be good with that. You should be good with, you know, I got a problem, I solved it, thank God. No, my work is not done because there are like, as soon as I <clears throat> extinguish one fire, there are other 10 fires that need my attention, right? So you should be someone who's like, 
you got a problem, you solved it. Now you need to jump on the next one and jump on the next one and jump. And this is not going to end, right? So you should be okay with that kind of lifestyle uh, uh, to live with if you want to be a product manager, right? Uh, analytical thinking, right? <clears throat> now, it does not need, necessarily mean that you need to be good at math. I'm not great at math. So analytical thinking is, can you just think in structures and logic, right? which is to say, can you write logically? Can you think logically, right? Uh, can you think in a structured manner? Like what's the step one? What's the step two? What's the step three? What's the step four? If you think kind of analytically in a structured manner, you, you are good. Right? Now, most of the jobs at this point, because most of our jobs are becoming data oriented a lot. And this, this, this would be across, right? This would be across brand management, consulting, uh, uh, data analysts, uh, uh, data centers, right? This, this skill is now across, right? Uh, <clears throat> bias for action, super important because I've seen uh, like in product management, you know, some, some PMs are great planners and some PMs are great executors because, they, but in, in reality, the executors always like in a long run, executors will always win, right? So you need a great bias for action that, Hey, you know what? I want to solve this problem, but how do I go about solving it as fast as possible? Right? If I create a PRD, send it to a deep new review, send it to another deep new review, it's going to take months for that feature to come along. So as a company and as a product manager, you need to be biased for action. Okay, we need to take action as fast as possible. Otherwise, the company's growth is going to slow down because you're not fixing problems as fast as possible. And the backlog of problem is being built up. And there would be a tipping point where everything will go bust, right? So <clears throat> it's very crucial for you to be a great, great at bias for action as a product manager. Now, <clears throat> this is, uh, I think this is the number one question that I get. Um, that do we need to know coding to become a product manager, right? <clears throat> and this, and the answer to this is absolutely not. You don't need to be a coder. I'm not an engineer. Although I've done some bits and pieces of coding in the past, right? <clears throat> just, just to kind of learn way back where I was in school. Uh, but I'm not like engineer, no CS, nothing like that. I've not done any coding course to <clears throat> Um, So you don't need tech understanding uh, like a coding or need to know a coding language to become a product manager, but you definitely need to know basic level of tech. What is basic level of tech? How do apps work? Now you don't need to know, okay, what is infrastructure? Is it using Python, JavaScript? Is there a Docker? Uh, what server is it running or is it AWS or anything? You don't need to know in that depth. You need to know how, how things work. Like just a basic thing as, you know, what is a domain name? What is a website? What is hosting? But what does it mean? You don't need to know the technical, there is a WordPress or, uh, you know, there's a WordPress hosting within that there is a Linux hosting, there is a Windows hosting, there is shared hosting. How, what is shared hosting? What is Linux hosting? You don't need to go in that time. What is a domain? What is hosting? What is WordPress? <coughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> what is an IP address? Um, things like, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 even some tits and pieces of things like what is an API? How does an API work? Right. But that, that's not like a deeper take understanding. You would just Google these things and you would learn it, right? And in the simplest manner possible, you understand what they do, right? So as long as you, you, you know some basic pieces of tech, you, you should be good to. And that's not something that you need to learn a coding or take a coding course for this. Just Google shit and, and you should be done, right? You don't need to go beyond that. 